Truly, I did not know what to expect of a wizard. In our campaign to reclaim Solon, Gelt led from the front lines despite my protests. It would do us no good if the Supreme Patriarch was slain under our protection. Using spells as I would my own sword, goblin and orc fell to our fury. Steingart was taken, and the people once exiled were given a home again. Our travels thereafter led us beyond the protection of Fort Sol. We were to retake a dwarf hold called Kurak Izor, held by the Broken Nose tribe. We came upon their numbers beyond the hold, staging an ambush by using their goblin shaman as bait. The ensuing route led us into the mountains, where we stood in marvel at what the dwarves had carved from solid stone. With Nuln's own guns, we toppled the ancient walls, carving a bloody path through the surviving Greenskin army. Avaland, led by the Mad Count Marius, delegated the authority of his land to Geld. We learned that a wizard does not deal in altruism, but rather in favors. He took us on a personal errand to reclaim some magical artifact. Thousands of undead groaned and shambled towards us. The dead, however, just needed help resting again. And so I led the men into the fray, and I expect more will be pleased with us for our services. That is our journey so far. In Sigmar's name, I'll continue to fight for the man in the golden mask. We begin our story today with a battle. Gelt leads his men to the site of an ancient barrow mound with the intent of obtaining a powerful artifact, the Amulet of Sea Gold, an ancient elven heirloom that would further enhance the magical capabilities of the Supreme Patriarch. There's only an undead army that stands in the way of his prize. Gelt and Captain Otto are now gearing up for a major undead army, but it's really a practice run for what is to come. We're going to be fighting Vlad von Karstein, that won't be an easy affair. And so right now, we have our Outriders and our Pistoliers riding with them. We're here to harass, we're here to ensure that the undead army is weakened. In fact, let's go have a look at their army right now. They're way over here, they're not advancing, not yet. That'll come in time. They have a Vampire Lord. And also over here, a White King. These two alone can do a lot in combat. What I'm not looking forward to is fighting Vlad von Karstein and his regenerative capabilities. In melee, it feels like he's nigh unkillable. But here we have Gelt and again our more scout focused wing advancing forward just to harass and to minimize what they have. They don't have the tools to engage at range. We're not going to be able to upgrade our army too often outside of regiments of renown that come to join us because we're going to have to rush. We've got a lot to do. Gelt already has some pretty powerful spells and he's become powerful, but he needs more. And so we also have a new army right over here where I had to quickly pivot all of our men over to the right flank. So we've got our Steingart watchers, we've got our spearmen and also our great swords on the front lines. We're fighting skeleton warriors and zombies too. It's really not too much of a challenge, not for our well armed and well geared men. They're going to be fine. It's going to take a moment, but they're going to be able to beat them. And spellcasting is going to go a long way to really ruining their day. Our great swords now have a glittering robe buff, plus 60 to armor. Now they have 165 for armor. That alone is going to allow them to fight multiple enemies. And so we're back over here, going after some zombies. With a focus volley or two, they all fall apart like that. Way over here is where we have our artillery just ramming them, just destroying them. Each battery is going to do considerable damage to their units before they even make it to us. So let's go back over to where our main army is at. You can see that we've got our artillery on the left hand side. We've got spells over here, enhancing my own soldiers again and again. And they're even being debuffed by a transmutation of lead, reducing their melee attack and their base weapon damage. It's already very low for them. That's why the great swords are just going to have a training day. That's good because I only have one group of great swords for right now. Let's come back over here. We've got our first stolen guards. They're being helped out by my Steingart watchers, the free company militia men who are easily able to maneuver around enemy flanks and shoot right into their backsides. There can be some friendly fire, so you've got to watch out for that. But there we've got them too. 
and that battle is nearly over. But the whole battle is not over. As you can see, over there to the northwest, we've got many more undead mounted units coming our way, and also fell bats. And fell bats, while they don't really have a lot of staying power, they're able to deal a lot of damage. They're able to reach your more vulnerable units. The Great Swords now have 155 kills. The Stolen Braves, they are quite heroic. Look at that ferocity in battle. Fighting the undead, the living, it doesn't really matter. Either way, they get their way. Let's come back now. The Fell Bats are now interceding and annoying my ranged units. I've got to use whatever I can to keep them from killing all of my ranged units. It takes time, but it's something that we're going to be able to do. That's really their strength. Just being able to use numbers and all of that. We've got some of our hardest battles to really complete today. The Great Swords now have 200 kills and counting. They've got, what, their Dire Wolves and also that White King who's moving in. Over here, we've got more Dire Wolves moving in. Our front line has the first Gelt Guard. They've got 80 armor total. And our Reclaimers, our Swordsmen. They're just all helping out. My Knights have also charged in, my Lancers, and they're attacking the Felbats who have been debuffed. The idea behind using a transportation of lead is to ensure that they're not able to land their attacks on our units. The Dire Wolves over here have been buffed up, which is deadly. And here's Gelt 2 also fighting, and very tired already. He's already fatigued. Not a good sign. Our cannon currently has 90 kills total. The mortars are just shelling them over and over. Hopefully, we're going to land a few nice hits on them. Those two missed. There's one directly in the middle, too. And here they come now. We've got Hex Wraiths. Oh, these are not easy. But if we use a few Searing Dooms, they're going to fall apart. We're also using a Final Transmutation just to attack them because they are vulnerable to magic damage. Though that might not be the best spell to use against them. It still works out. There. They took more damage. Look at that. Their health is pretty darn low. They're being debuffed as well. And we're just going to keep on buffing our own units while ensuring that they are weaker as well. There's an invocation of Nehek keeping them up. On the right hand side, we've got our units again having to deal with more undead. The Great Swords are so tired now. They are exhausted. They're fighting that White King and also more skeleton spearmen. On our right hand side, we've got those pistoliers and our outriders who are moving around just to shoot at them. There's a Searing Doom that landed on top of that group over on our left flank. The mortars are shelling over here. That way, there's not going to be too much friendly fire. We're also trying to target this group of Grave Guard. They have great weapons, 42 weapon strength, which is incredibly high. So we're trying to focus our ranged attacks on them. You can see that back over here, we've got our ranged units, our crossbowmen. Their job is just to go after that group of Grave Guard. Those Hex Wraiths are pretty much done for. We still do have to fight some Black Knights over on the left-hand side. My Swordsmen, they're able to hold up, though. They're doing well enough. Over here, we've got Otto, who's fighting on horseback. He's got 36 kills right now. There's my artillery, all attacking one group of Grave Guard. That's really the bright idea that I had here, was to focus everything on getting rid of a very elite group of infantry. And that's why they're crumbling. And it's over for the Grave Guard. We come back over to the right hand side. The Great Swords, they're still fighting. 357 kills, fighting Skeleton Spearmen. We come back over, we can see that Vampire Lord right in the middle of everything. He's being debuffed by the Averland Runefang, but buffed up by his Dance Macabre. Captain Otto continues to fight him. And you can see that my Pistoliers and Outriders are still moving around, coming over here now to offer a bit more firepower. It adds up over time. And here's our lovely infantry just holding on. They look incredible. Look at that. Those shields. They are ready. I mean, if you're going to fight for Gelt, you're going to fight in style. You've got to. And so we've won now. They're beginning to fall apart. It's all over for them. We've won the battle. And Gelt gets an artifact. Another one. Another one that he's going to be able to use to enhance his power. Which is what we're going to need if we're going to really survive and do well. 
So back over here, we're still fighting the Black Knights. I've got my Lancers who are not charging over and over. Traditionally, you want them charging over and over, but I just wanted them to kind of keep our enemies static. I didn't want them moving in and out. And sometimes it can be a pain for them to disengage as well. Over here, we've got more crumbling skeleton spearmen. Our infantry, they're just holding on. 75 kills there. I mean, they have a lot. Back over to our great swords, over 400 kills. They're falling apart. The White King is still around, chasing after Gelt. The biggest issue that we're going to have, especially as we go on through this part, is that a major strength of the undead is that they have very powerful lords and heroes. And it's going to take time for me to have the power and capacity to go after them. That's where we did have a little bit of friendly fire from our mortars. I had to correct that over there. And over here, they're still chasing after Gelt, but they have been at least debuffed. They're chasing after now my Steingard Watchers, who can run and shoot. They just need to be careful. They're holding up, though. Captain Otto is over here. He was pretty low, and I just wanted him close by to further enhance nearby units. That Vampire Lord, Leopold Harkon, he's staying put. It's a long one to take down a blasted Vampire Lord, but once they finally begin to crumble, it's all over. They are alone. We just need to beat them. That was an incredibly challenging battle, but our men were able to pull through. In fact, we can look at a few new veterans as well. We've got over here a rank 6 crew for Otto's Fury. Our great cannon crew, they're getting quite good. Eventually, they're going to shoot off a vampire count's head. That's really their goal. Over here, we can see that their numbers didn't really score too many kills, though we are weakened. And obviously, the efforts of our captain, Captain Otto, and Geld really preserved many lives here. We lost 172 men. We gained a lot of experience and even gold. We'll take over here more experience because we're not going to let the undead go. Sometimes we'll let them wander off and just fall back into their graves. But here, we're just going to get a little bit more experience. And now we've got five more leadership whenever we fight the vampire counts. That's incredibly good. In the harsh light of day, the nocturnal predator becomes easy prey. That's true. And look at that. Sterling's Revenge. I do love my free company militia. They're quite effective. So we're going to pick them up very soon. And over here we have a scribe for Captain Otto. Someone to do all the bookkeeping. Now that provides 8% more campaign movement range. We'll be able to move a bit further. For our new Elven Heirloom, we've got one over here. Minus 10% to any enemy hero's action chance. Minus 5 to corruption locally, plus 10% more speed, plus 5 to melee defense, and a whopping major 20% spell resistance. Ooh, and another pit fighter. There we are. That provides for me 5,000 more gold and a lot more replenishment. So now, here's what we'll do. We'll come back into town to patch up. It'll take like two turns. Yeah, then we'll be okay. Everyone is going to deal a little bit more damage in combat. And unfortunately, over here, Middenlin is about to fall. That'll be it for them. The more Elector Counts that fall, the less Imperial Authority that we will have. Civil War may come in time, which is unfortunate. We'll have to deal with it. Over here, Geld has two points to use. We're going to pick up Lore Master, Lore of Metal. Our Lore of Metal spells will be cheaper by two, but more importantly, the cooldown will go down by 25%. After that, let's pick up Earthing. We have a lower chance to miscast. That's a good thing whenever we're overcasting our spells. For Captain Otto, we're going to pick up Woundmaker. That puts him at 470 weapon strength, which is really good. It's only 70 because of a brutal business over here where we all have more base weapon damage. Now, let's have a look at our mini buildings. Averland, you're able to upgrade your industry a little bit more. Good. Over here, we could pick up a guardhouse. That would provide four more units. But I would like to avoid the plague. So we're going to pick up the Night Watch. That's going to decrease our chance of a plague spreading by 50%. It's only 1,500 gold. If we have a look around, there's Nurgle's touch all over. So we've got to be careful. We might have to move back over here to fight Whistleland. If we look at their fealty, it's only two. They're very angry that Gelt was given Soland. 
But for now, let's move over here to the east. If we need to run back, we'll do that, but if not, it's okay. We just need to patch up for a few turns. It shouldn't take too long, so we're moving to Averheim right now. Then, we'll move a little bit up north to move over here closer to Fort Obersteyr. We need to go after the Vampire Counts. Let's have a look. Vlad von Karstein, we could get rid of him, which would further empower the Empire. Then later, we could go after the Wood Elves up north. Then finally, we could come over here to take out the Leech Lord and hopefully rebuild a bit of the Empire up north. That's our plan, because we do need more Imperial authority if we want the Empire to survive. And if it falls into civil war, we might have to take over. For the greater good, of course. Captain Otto and Geld Solander army moved to Averheim, the capital of Averland. Their way of life is sustained by the vast cattle that provide meat stores for the rest of the Empire and even the dwarves. Now the city provides a road to the east where eventually the army will come to the borders of Sylvania. Now we're able to upgrade Fildorf. Let's do that. It's turning from a village into a proper town. Captain Otto is right to trust in Geld. Now their people are growing even more. It is good to see Over here, Sterlin could give me day. military access and also a bit of gold too. Right. We want that because I want to be able to move closer to the Von Karsteins. We've got to watch out. They have no plague, thankfully. They did before, but they seem to be fine now. As long as we follow the road, we should be able to make it over here just fine. Let's move a bit closer. We only need to be a bit careful. Right now, Sterling is attacking Vlad von Karstein. The Tempelhof vampires are not attacking him, but that could change. We shall see. Let's get a little bit closer. Again, we're just trying to avoid any damage. It's a very delicate affair, because one wrong move, and we lose a few hundred men or a few dozen men. I don't want that. That should do it. Okay, hopefully on our following turn, we'll be able to move into the Undead Lands. No one usually says that, but we've got to do it. And here we have some more political drama. You have caught wind of vicious rumors being spread about you, accusing you of being a secret worshipper of chaos. They're small-minded. There is no indication as to the source of these lies, which of course have absolutely no grounds in reality and are clearly political in their motivations. What a bunch of fools over here. I've got the money. There. I'm gonna be okay. Unfortunately, Midland is now gone. That isn't our fault. Which means Imperial authority is beginning to crumble even more. We're gonna have to move quickly. Sterling, they're gone right now. Let's begin our war. We need to. We've got to attack right away. They're quite powerful, but that's fine. If there's a civil war, we shall take care of it. I'm gonna have to auto-resolve. It's only a minor battle, but that does provide a lot of experience. We lost only 175 men. We gained a bit of gold we're going to occupy. We're here to make peace. There are people who live here. Let's destroy that training field. We don't need it. It's only tier one, which isn't ideal, but that's fine. On our following turn, we'll go after Tempelhof as well. We're here to get rid of all of the undead. And we have only one more turn until our technology is completed. We've completed our technology over here, which means we have 10% more weapon strength in addition to an expert charge defense for our halberdiers, which we don't have yet, but once we do, that's going to be great to have. Let's spend 7,000 gold. Emissary to the Prince of Altdorf. We've got the money. That money might not be nearly as high once we have another army. That's going to provide for us plus 25 to relations when it comes to the Empire, Kislev, and the Southern Realms, in addition to plus one to control. More control for our lands. Let's come over here. We've got another war to fight. It's going to be a difficult one. They have a major army. By all rights and means, I shouldn't be able to win. But Gelt and Captain Otto are quite potent when it comes to combat. They've got all these crypt horrors. They've got crypt ghouls, which are very effective with a 60 weapon strength. They're going to do a lot of damage in combat, but we're going to do our best. Templehof, the westernmost town of Sylvania that borders Sterling. It is named for its famed Temple of Moor, the god of the dead, that has not seen a priest in over 800 years. The Solander army now comes to the town to rectify that heresy. Now here's a proper siege battle. 
it's not going to be easy, but a siege battle is not meant to be. Thankfully, we've got the technology to render them nearly useless, at least early on. We're going to have quite a few siege battles where we're just going to have to shell them. We're going to have to use our range advantages to deal damage. There's Gelt casting a Searing Doom. They were already hit by our Great Cannon and our Mortars too. There's another shot. These shots will continue to just lambast all of them until hopefully we have a nice victory. There we go again. Grave Guard. We've got Kern Wraiths over here. They've taken a lot of damage. Even though their numbers haven't dropped yet, that's going to come. See, we're continuing to use Searing Doom. It's a very cheap spell and the returns for it are so darn high. Gelt knows right now that he's got to use any advantage that he has, and that advantage is going to revolve around magic and, of course, artillery. After that, we're going to have to break down these walls and then come in with our other range units, who have to be a bit closer. Crypt Ghouls are also quite damaging, too. They have a lot of power. They're able to deal a lot of damage to our lowly armored units, and we have a lot of them. I mean, thankfully, they have more than the default, but that's still not enough. Like, over here, have a look at that. They're nearly done for, 32 left. That's what I wanted to ensure that they didn't have that. If we look all around their town, they've got a countless amount of undead, thousands upon thousands. And here's the big issue. Though we have more quality, that's true. We're in hostile lands, we're in their territory. We're gonna have to not only beat them once, but many times over. We're gonna have to fight multiple undead armies. That's why we're pushing hard. That's why we're just trying to ensure that Hey, we could take a town, maybe recuperate, but we're going to rush because after we're done taking Sylvania, we're going to spend many turns recuperating and rebuilding our armies. I should have the money to easily afford a second army by then, especially with the gold mine at Drakenhof. That alone will be able to fund so much of what I want to do. And so right now, we're going after their walls. We're going to break apart one portion of their walls, and then after that, another one. We just want to be able to move closer. See, they're right over here, believing that they're safe. They're controlled by necromancers, and for a time, they're going to be safe. Until I breach that exterior defense. And here it goes right now. It's over. We even hit a few of their units, too. Man, these undead are really on their secret juice. They're all roided up. We took out one of them with a great cannon shot. Their gates and two portions of their wall have been breached. That's why we have our crossbows now focusing their attacks upon them. We want them weakened. Not only weakened, just diminished. We're still going to have to fight over 3,000 undead while fighting the Grave Guard. It's going to be great once I'm able to upgrade my army, but it's going to take many turns to build up my towns properly. There we go. They're attacking pretty far out right now. There's a lot of undead over there that we're trying to target. There. Look at that. Poised dead, you foul abomination. Two down, too. Those were great shots. Hans and Franz are not getting up. That's it. And we're going to keep on doing that for a period of time, just using that artillery to weaken them a little bit more. And whatever crossbows that we're able to use to focus fire upon them, their bolts will come in handy. After that, we're going to bring in our Steingard Watchers, our Free Company Militia. Yeah, they're moving back right now. And we're moving forward just a little smidge. I'm just trying to get my scouts in over here. That way they're able to use their armor piercing shots to weaken them. It might not be a lot of damage and not everything will land, but it's still going to hit them. We have taken the front gate. Here is Gelt and Captain Otto. They're fighting a Shrigoi Ghoul King. The undead abomination is not going to be able to win, but it's still going to be a challenging fight. There. We've got our final transmutation and the Averlin Runefang weakening him. Here they come now. They're being buffed up. So far, Reginald, that Ghoul King, is taking a lot of damage. Gelt has to move back. He's a spellcaster. He's not meant for the trials and affairs of melee combat. The Great Cannon continues to attack way out over there, landing some devastating hits upon them. A good Searing Doom is always nice to have. It hits so many different units, especially while fighting the undead. Back over here, we've got a glittering robe on Captain Otto. Alone, he's fighting that Ghoul King. He's going to have some help very soon. Just not yet, though. There we go now. A final transmutation. Look at that. The Ghoul King is now crumbling. 
between the magic of Gel and the prowess of Captain Otto, they're able to take him out. That alone is going to change up the battle. That means they're not going to have their powerful spellcaster to keep them around. Come on, Captain Otto. You know he's done for. And look at what we have over here. Our swordsman moving in. Another Searing Doom. Captain Otto is quite resilient. We've got him. The Ghoul King has been struck down. Now let's have a proper look at what we're doing. So we're moving in our units currently. We've got our swordsmen, our reclaimers over here, holding the front line. We've also got our Solon Braves. The Solon Braves are going to resist all of these hundreds of units. Zombies, Graveguard, all of them. They're going to be hit a bit by the towers here. That's going to be grating, annoying even, but we've got to endure anyway. Unfortunately, our reclaimers were spread out quite a bit, but we're still going to be over here using a transmutation of lead to debuff them as we fight. Captain Otto has 15 kills after taking out their leader. Gelt is also fighting in melee at over 100 kills using Searing Doom. And we have my first Gelt's Guard. Remember, that's my Regiment of Renown, my special unit. They've got 80 armor, which makes them rather resilient in combat. We're still using spell casting all over just to weaken them. Another Searing Doom. And also, of course, I'm using my mortars to shell their Crypt Ghouls. See, they've got Crypt Horrors, and we're trying to hit them hard. My great swords over here, they're doing fine. Of course, being hit by those Blasted Towers, but they are inaccurate, thankfully. They've got 105 armor, 55 for weapon strength, and they're holding out. While they hold out, we continue to batter them with Searing Dooms. I mean, you're going to see Searing Doom featured prominently in every single battle that we fight. And I tried to avoid as much friendly fire as possible with my mortars. So back over here, we've got my scouts, we've got my sons of Averheim, my pistoliers who are just trying to take a few shots where they're able to. Thankfully, they're able to hit those Crypt Horrors. See that? Glittering rogues against... I mean, look at that. They're buffing up my infantry, putting them up to 100 armor. Meaning that they have only 40 armor by default. Which isn't really ideal, but hey... We're going to enhance it through technology and whatever else we can. We're going to have a lot more later on. They're holding on right now. Look at that. Crypt Horrors. They're being debuffed. Unfortunately, there was a bit of friendly fire there. I always try to rectify and ensure that it doesn't really take out too many of our boys. Sometimes you got to play it close, though. you got to take a risk, a gamble. So Gel and Captain Otto, they're moving in now, holding back the Crypt Horrors. Now, tactically, it's going to be very static battles whenever fighting the Vampire Counts, just because of the nature of their armies, and these are siege battles too. The undead are still over here. We are beating them though, and I've got my Steingart Watchers on the walls. That's important. They're going to be able to shoot down, and also draw a little bit of the enemy's fire. There's my mortars. I have them targeting right behind enemy lines. They have more Crypt Ghouls moving in, but they're being attacked by my Steingart Watchers. They're taking a lot of damage. Look at that health bar. It's just going down now. Here's another transmutation of lead. Thankfully, we've got so much magic to use. We're able to weaken them constantly. Right now, the Grave Guard have only two melee attack. They're not landing their hits currently. There's another Searing Doom. Captain Otto continues to rally the men and keep them together. My great swords over here are still alone. They've got 251 kills. They're fighting Grave Guard. They're fighting Skeleton Warriors. And here's a Glittering Robe. I mean, notice how many spells I'm using. 165 armor. Though, again, they're very tired, so they're still going to take some hits. But they're holding. Thanks to them, I didn't have to worry about my left flank. And I've got my crossbows moving in, too, just trying to help out. But getting a proper angle with my crossbows has proven to be a challenge. Back over here... We've got the Crypt Horrors, who are now crumbling. We've got Crypt Ghouls, and they've been hit by that Searing Doom. Between all the firepower and the magic, they're now falling. Sure, they can hoist a lot. Oh, look at that. Almost in sync. But that undead crew, that band, has now been retired. Captain Otto charges back in. 76 kills. The Reclaimers are also charging in, despite being exhausted. 172. They're fighting the tireless undead, but they are not limitless. We just need to hold on. Back over here, another transmutation of lead. They have been weakened. The Black Knights have moved in. Look at that. The Watchers, 39 kills. 
13 kills. It's adding up, though. Another Searing Doom. Gelt now has 363 kills and counting. Wild debuffing. Wild buffing up. Back over here, we brought together a group of spearmen to help out my greatswords. We do push out a bit using mortars to take out these skeleton spearmen. Let's check on my artillery. Way over here. 272 and 243. Collectively, they've taken out a large chunk of the enemy's forces. In time, they should collapse. That's really my hope here. My hope is that we make them collapse before we need to actually take every point in this blasted town. These siege battles are costly. And every unit I lose is a bother for me. Look at that. They're at over 500. We've got 1,200 left. Even if we had a full army, it would only be 1,514. Our units are now moving in. They're coming out. I just wanted them to go after these crypt goals just to bother them a little bit. Just to kind of bring them our way. To shoot them. Land a few shots. Sometimes they won't listen or they'll disregard an order and take some more damage. And there we go. My great cannon just took out one arrow tower. So I was also moving in my artillery to help out. They've got 37 kills. But more importantly, they took down portions of the wall. They took down that tower, which is going to save a lot of lives. We've got Otto at 80 kills. Gel at 363. I mean, they are spent. They have done their part. The Crypt Goals are still over here. They have only a few kills. I'm trying to move out my Watchers a little bit more. That way we're able to cover more of the enemy line as they begin to proceed towards us. Here's one corpse cart all alone. He's like, you know what? I'm going to take my bodies over there. You guys are not interested in my wares. And we're like, no. But we do have a bone to pick with you. And then he groaned. Maybe because he's dead. Maybe because it was a bad joke. Maybe both. I don't know. But we got them there. The Crypt Ghouls now have a weak binding, meaning that they're beginning to fade. Between the crossfire for my Watchers and also my other units over here, it's over. We've won the battle. The town is taken. That was a tough battle, but we were able to pull through. We also got the Scroll of Aramar. It's a debuff. It's a hex, reducing enemy leadership and their vigor. Okay. Now, we've gained 8,225 XP, in addition to 1,609 gold. That's incredible. We're going to be much more powerful now because of that. We're going to occupy because we just want to hold on to what we have here. Another vampire killed. Well, that is ideal. And now Gelt has a Pegasus too, called Quicksilver. Oh, look at that. So does Captain Otto. We don't have to use him. I'll choose to do so, but we don't have to. The Silver Bullets. So now we've got Hand Gunners. And also the White Wolves, a very powerful group of Huntsmen. Goodbye, Templehof. That means we need to replenish for a turn or two, but after that, we'll be able to go to Castle Drakenhof, or maybe we could push on. It depends on where they move after our following turn. Gil is currently rank 17. He's got three skill points to use. We'll give him Golden Face Mask for 20 more armor. Stronger than steel. That way, our entire army has plus 9 to armor. And new formulations providing more ammo and missile strength for our entire range component. For Captain Otto, let's provide for him Wound Maker. Two points into it. That way, he's at 527 weapon strength. When it comes to what we have over here, we're going to retire our Solon Guards. There we are. And also one group of Pistoliers too. Because we do have rather incredible units that we need to utilize, like our Huntsmen. 28 missile strength is quite high, we'll take that. And over here, the Silver Bullets too. That's going to deal so much damage in combat, we want to utilize whatever we have. I don't have a lot of money to really use right now for building, but we're going to pick up, over here, a Weaving House. Only 500 gold, and it pays out a lot too. State troops are often issued with armor plate to ensure unit cohesion and a reasonable level of protection. Plus 15 for infantry units when it comes to armor. That sounds great to me. We already have a few benefits. Why not get more? Now Vlad von Karstein and his wife Isabella have come to fight us. We need to go fight them. We also have over here a quest battle. We can't do it yet. We've got to wait. But once we have it, oh, we're going to be so much more powerful. Miscasting will be a thing of the past. Now, let's go into combat right over here. They've got a powerful army. Our garrison 
they're rather weak. We're trying to get more men to come live here, which is a hard sell. But now, let's go fight Vlad von Karstein, who is currently rank 14. He's pretty darn powerful. Vlad von Karstein is the first vampire count of Slovenia and the founder of the infamous von Karstein bloodline. He married Isabella, the daughter of the late imperial count Otto von Drac. He is a tenacious enemy that is known for returning even after defeat. Otto and Gelt will amend that soon. We are now in a different ball game. We are fighting Vlad von Karstein. We're going to have to go over our plan on how we're going to win. I do worry about him quite a bit. I know how powerful he is. The first Solon Scouts, they have moved up over here. They've been hit by an enemy spell, but thankfully it didn't really do a lot of damage to them. We've got our Pistoliers close by. Our goal is to go after the Vargais. They are a glass cannon. They're able to just really rupture a lot of damage into your lines. Thankfully, they have only 10 armor, but they're highly mobile. Obviously so. The Felbats are not fun either. Gelt is close by. He's on his Pegasus right now, Quicksilver. He's going to be able to do a bit, but he's not going to be nearly as effectual until they're all grouped up. Over here, we have our formation. We can't really move too much because we don't have the numbers. If I had more greatswords, maybe. And even then, we're just over here. Quite weakened. The Reclaimers, they have what? Very few men left. 50. My greatswords, 79. I've got right in between them in a more checkered-like formation, my Steingard Watchers. They're over here too with my Silver Bullets, our new handgunners, that we're going to rename into something more appropriate for our own campaign. The Scouts are moving back now, drawing in the Fell Bats. We've got over here our Gelt's Guard, the White Wolves, our Huntsmen, and we've got our Artillery right in the rear. Also, right behind them, our Lancers, because we just need to watch out for their flanking units. The Black Coach, the dire wolves, all of it. My sons are moving back now. We're just trying to use whatever spellcasting we can over here to damage all of them. Look at that. Isabella. I used a little searing doom just for a bit of fun, just to have fun. Just to kind of keep them on their toes a bit. And here I'm having to kind of rearrange my formation using my mortars right now to shell up those zombies and crypt ghouls and all of that, which are hard to see. We're moving back over here now using my scouts and my Pistoliers to target their fell bats. The Dire Wolves are also moving in. So we're just trying to rotate our units just a little bit, just so we're able to keep them relatively safe, though they did make it into melee combat, unfortunately. Back over here on my right flank, I've got my Knights. The Vargais are still over here. We're using our Steingard Watchers and our Huntsmen to target them. They're still attacking. We're going to take some damage. Here comes now more Dire Wolves and that Black Coach, which is... Not wise to use on its own, but that's what they're doing right now. So it's charging in, and more importantly, we're having to really focus down the Var guys who have taken a lot of damage, but they still have 12 left. The Knights are now charging in to help out. They've been kind of caught over here. They did use a Flock of Doom on my units, and it was upgraded. So it looks like they're going to use a lot of uh, Flock of Doom to deal some damage. And unfortunately, my cannon moved forward. I usually have everything on guard mode when I don't want them to budge, but sometimes, hey, things happen. Over here, we've got Captain Otto, who's already weak. 18 kills, though. He's going after the Black Coach, and their front lines is coming over here. Another Searing Doom just to kind of, like, hit a few of their units. I'm just trying to deal some damage. It's a very cheap spell for me, so even a little bit of damage goes a long way. And over here, we have our Huntsmen, who are now targeting these Crypt Ghouls, and Vlad is about to make it into my line. You can see that my infantry, they're just trying to hold over here. Look at how many are left. They've got a total of 1,700, but... Again, reinforced by Vlad von Karstein. Back over here, I've got my Steingard Watchers who are having to deal with a little bit of melee. My Braves are debuffed by Master of Beguilement. Also, they're frightened too by the enemy unit. Minus 40 to melee attack. They've got zero right now, so they're dealing no damage at all. They can't land anything. I'm trying to get my cannon and everything to target Isabella to weaken and destroy her. That's my goal right now. Let's just kind of like zoom out and just have a look at the battle so far. We can see all the different moving parts. On my left-hand side, I'm just trying to flank them. I'm using my lanterns now. We're going to charge into them. We just want to really focus fire on what we can while holding them back. The dire wolves and Vargais are gone. We've got my silver bullets right over here. I'm used to them really getting many more kills. It didn't feel as effective during this battle. I tried to get cleaner shots on my enemies, but it just wasn't happening here. There was just so much going on. We come back over here to see that right now they are debuffed by Gelt again. Transmutation of lead. 
more zombies and spearmen. See, zombies might be fodder, but they're keeping us busy. They're also tiring out my more elite units too. Back over here, we have my watchers at over 30 kills who are finally ripping into these skeleton spearmen who thankfully are beginning to fade. I mean, these brave men, they're doing their best right now. We come back over here to see that we're just debuffing. We're debuffing and buffing. We're buffing our units. We've got the mortars shelling right there. See, right now, I clicked on Alt, and I right-clicked exactly where I wanted my mortars to shell. Kind of like towards the rear, because they're going to go astray a little bit, but we want them to target one area. There's my Searing Doom, hitting a lot of those undead over here. I'm trying to ensure that we can move in more of our melee later. Unfortunately, they broke my Reclaimers, and my great swords are nearly wiped out. I buffed them up. I gave them 60 armor. They're at 174 now. They're fighting a few grave guard who are left. I mean, look at how much damage we are dealing. But it's still not sufficient because of Vlad and Isabella. Isabella is still around. So is Vlad. We're now moving in a little bit closer. My sons of Averheim have 123 kills. They had to charge in just because they're pretty much out of ammo. Over here, my fourth Solon Reclaimers. They're also charging in right now. We're just trying to go after what's left of their infantry. My silver bullets now have over 60 kills. Oh boy, it is not a kind day for us right now, but we're doing it slowly but surely. They've got Aura of Dark Grandeur, minus four to my leadership. There's my Lancers charging in. We just wanted them to go after Isabella and Vlad to try to weaken them. If we have a look at our units right now, most of their army is gone, but we're gonna spend most of that time going after those two leaders. We're going to have to begin just moving away and allowing our range units to target them. I mean, Isabella's been debuffed by transportation of lead. She's much more vulnerable. She's not nearly as powerful. Vlad is over here at, what, 48 kills. And he's regenerating nonstop. He has that capability. His abilities to regenerate are just really uh, not tenable to really contend with sustainably. Because no matter what, he's going to linger like a thorn in my side. Look at that. They're all gone but these two. So now we're going to spend a long time just slowly breaking them down. We're going to have to cycle charges with our captain and even Gelt too. They're going to have to take their time. That flock of doom deals so much damage to us. See, he's at 81 kills. My men are weak, so that flock of doom is quite, quite a bit more effective now. All of our range units have now moved up on this hill. Because we just have to run away. We have to move away in order to allow them to have the proper amount of time to focus on each hero, on each lord. Isabella is now going to chase them. We're going to have to move back as we try to shoot her down. We might as well get rid of her. Hopefully he'll begin to crumble. But I was really shocked at how long they were lingering. My poor greatsword's only 18 left. Barely any left. She takes a lot more damage. There we go. And while that is going on, Vlad is over here. Look at his health. The Karstein Ring, 60% damage resistance. He's going after my crews. Unfortunately, I can't really do much about that right now. There goes one cannon. We're chasing after Isabella. We're just going to be doing that until she's dead. Thankfully, we've got a lot of ammunition. It's just about not having them catch up to my infantry. She has 40 speed. My boy's over here, 31. She's incredibly fast. I mean, despite what she's wearing, she's like, I know how to sprint. I know how to get things done. And we got her. There goes Isabella. Shaft to the head. Always works. That's really the solution to my problems. Thankfully, taking out Isabella got to him. Emotionally, I hope. Not just physically, but emotionally as well. But he's still over here. He's like, you know what? You're going to take out my wife. I'm going to take out a few of your boys. And so we're having to now move our crews away as we get all of our range units back over here to focus fire on him. I can't wait to get rid of Vlad because the big problem is... He's able to come back so quickly. He doesn't stay wounded for a long time. That's part of his shtick. He's all about coming back. And we don't want that. We don't want him coming back. Front, back, nowhere. We just want him gone. And he's falling apart now. There's a plague of rust reducing his armor. It's over. We've won. Finally. Goodbye, Vlad. That was an incredibly hard battle. We weren't at full power. And Vlad alone was almost able to take on our entire army. We're going to take our experience, because we've earned it, and we do have many good veterans. Thankfully, we should have a turn or two where we're going to be able to recuperate. 
wound recovery time down by one. We've got a forbidden rod. That's all fine and dandy. I wouldn't want to really damage any hero or lord that I have. But 10% spell resistance. I'll take it. Look at that. Undeath Descendant. Minus four to wound recovery time. And also, Gel is now able to regenerate. We have really increased our powers. At rank 18, we're going to have to give him something good. Arcane Conduit. We'll take that. I want to be able to use more magic in battle. For our good friend, Captain Otto, let's give him Blade Shield. There. We don't need stables over here. We could use a bit more control and a reduction to corruption, so we're going to take a night watch. Now, I would like to get rid of Vlad. He's right there. I've got to get rid of him. Wonder, could I raid and reach him? Let's try it out. We were able to do so. If I auto resolve, I'm going to lose three groups of my men, which means I can't do that. If I lose those three groups, we're going to be set back big time. We'll have to go undead hunting. Captain Otto and Geld have led their men into another battle. We had no choice. We've got to go after Vlad while he's weakened. If we do not, he's going to be around and even more powerful than ever before. He's going to bring in more units and raise up the dead. So here we've got our range units more towards the front lines collectively. We want to ensure that we're using our firepower as early as possible. So they've got some dire wolves. They're going after my Steingart Watchers, who are my close quarters infantry units. And while that is going on, we're just going to use our other range units on the right flank who are a bit further back, like our white wolves, and they're just going to continue attacking them. There, the dire wolves are already pretty weak, though they have been buffed up. They're going to land a few kills. The bar guys, they've got quite a few left. I was hoping that they would all be gone, but they're not. There's Vlad and Isabella. Isabella is by far the weaker of the two. We come back over here. There's the captain, there's Gelt, taking out those blasted dire wolves, and so the dire wolves are gone, and we're over here using a final transmutation. It's better to use it on a character when they're alone, but hey, we had to get her right there and then. She has over 800 HP. We have our main units way back over here. The Var guys are chasing after my riders, but they're now having to run away. They're going after my silver bullets, who have seven kills currently. The Var guys are just falling apart. Way back over here is where we're still targeting some Crypt Ghouls. And guess what? We're not going to have to fight their army for too much longer. We've outplayed them. But it doesn't matter. Vlad's like, I'm angry and I'm going to stay here. Angry vampire, too angry to die. Look at that. They're just doing a little bit of cross country together. Getting their cardio in. She's nearly done for it. We got her. There goes Isabella, down again. But Vlad is over here now, and so I've got my range units here trying to target him. There was a little bit of a intercession done on behalf of these Crypt Ghouls right over there, interrupting us. My poor Steingart Watchers, they're being chased after Vlad, and also they're being shot towards. There's that scroll I used, Fear of Aramar, reducing his leadership and also a transmutation of lead to reduce his damage. Elsewhere, we are just chasing down what's left. Some zombies, some spearmen. Doesn't really matter too much. There is a what? Karstein Ring reducing his damage by 60%. A Plague of Rust to decrease his armor. He's been debuffed. So there's my units now. Just trying to bring him around. Captain Otto is very low on health. So is Gel. So Vlad could really hit them and potentially kill Captain Otto. Gel would only be wounded, but... You could certainly get Captain Otto. Look at the amount of firepower we're putting into one leader, one person, one thing. He's using his invocation. That regeneration is still just boosting him upwards. He's holding on right now. He's debuffed my boys. I've used a glittering robe to help them out. I've got over here my other Steingart Watchers, our first group. They're having to confront the Vampire Lord. The entire enemy army is gone now. We're just going after Vlad von Karstein. I just want you to see what I'm having to really contend with. It's not easy. Another invocation. We've used the Averland Runefang. I had to watch out with my artillery. I think I took a few stray shots. Don't want to hit my boys too much. 
So now we're just going to play this little game where it's like, hey, not it. Unfortunately, it's a very damaging and deadly game. Yeah, there's my mortars. I can hear them. No. The poor watchers over here. But it was at a point where I was feeling pretty desperate just trying to get rid of him. They were having to play that role of bait. And that feels bad, right? But when you've got someone like Vlad who's just lingering, you got to do anything you can. So now they're able to turn around and shoot him. See, now we've got more firepower. It was just about getting my other units way over here. My silver bullets were very tired, so they were moving slowly. But we finally got him, and it's finally over. Goodbye, Vlad. We finally got him. We didn't lose any groups at all. We gained a decent amount of experience, and there they go. Fencer's Blades, not bad. We don't need it, but not bad. Audacious over here, more leadership and charge bonus for Gelt. And one Apprentice Wizard. Look at that, Winds of Magic Power Reserve change, up by 20% when increasing. That's gonna be really nice to have. Now we've got to move back home, we've got to. We've gotta find a way just to patch up. There we are. It's going to take a few turns, but eventually we're going to be ready to go back after their capital. So with our one skill point, let's put it over here into a few other things that we're able to use. Like Final Transmutation. It's a very powerful spell. I want to be able to use it on Vlad. It's really hard to take him down, so we've got to find any tool we can to do so. There is no choice but for the beleaguered Solander army to besiege Drakenhof, the capital of Sylvania. The castle is where Vlad von Karstein first began his reign of terror many years ago. It's built on the Drakenfelsen, the former dwelling of a large dragon from which Drakenhof derives its name. Captain Otto and Gelt had to make a very difficult decision. They are now besieging Drakenhof. There's a lot of units over here, and we could potentially lose, but we've got to press on. Vlad is already back. If we don't take it now, He'll potentially come over here and reinforce. We would need so many turns to replenish, it would really be a defeat for us, because we don't know what type of civil war might crop up in the interim, which is why we're going to battle right away. We're fighting for Castle Drakenhof now. There's Gel and Captain Otto, they're just over here trying to draw any type of tower of fire that comes towards our army. The mortars and Gelt. They're going to be the main damage dealers today. You know how it's going to go. We don't need to actually go in there. We're fighting vampire counts. We're just going to use what we have. It feels good to come back to that point where we could just take down their army bit by bit. Fighting Vlad was costly. Are we going to have to do it again? Of course we are. But we're going to take over all of Sylvania in order to elevate the empire. After that, if I spend a few turns just passing turns, we should get a sufficient amount of events to increase our overall Imperial authority. Then we're going to be able to have peace in the Empire and potentially do other plans and commit to other actions. The Grave Guard, they're taking their lumps right now. I've moved up my ranged units. We don't have to worry about a tower over here. So we've got my Orc Hunters. They used to be the White Wolves, but I think Orc Hunters would be appropriate for our units here. And the Solon Hawkeyes, they're also attacking. I'm probably going to move a few of our veterans into our second army. I don't want to just disband all of them. Some of them are going to move into our second army. It would be nice to pay like a small fee, but to keep them in reserve. That way, if you don't need them right now, you could say, hey, you're in reserve, but you don't want to disband them and lose their veterancy. Look at that. That Searing Doom just dealt so much damage. They're all just grouped up right now. So we're going to be able to concentrate all of that power on just weakening and destroying their army. They're low quality. That's what they are. I'm going to use my Great Cannon over here to go after this portion of the Fort Wall as we continue to go after Josu Krugenheim, their Grave Guard leader. They're just running around now. Searing Dooms for days. That's all that we really need. We could use some Golden Hounds, but the Golden Hounds cost more. That's why I love Geld so much. He's got so many great spells and just clearing out groups of enemies. He's at 59 kills right now. My White Wolves are at 14. Don't worry. After Sylvania, we're going to be able to go back to some field battles. It's just that whenever you go after Sylvania, you've got to rush so much and focus just everything on taking out their towns because you want to get rid of that corruption. Oh, there it is. That was a devastating hit. They're not all landing, but a lot of them are. Ooh, that goes down and down and down. Imagine having to fight down there. I don't want to. 
We're back over here again. They are crumbling. You know what? I'm going to use another Searing Doom. And so Gelt has nearly taken out that entire group. How many are here? Over 2,000. Not even the largest army that we're going to fight. There's going to be larger ones out there. It's going to get much worse as time goes on. Let's come back over here. You haven't seen our final battle yet. That one is incredible. The amount of undead that we're going to have to deal with. That's right. Six battles in one part. Their armies are moving forward. They're not all here. I wish they were. If they were, oh, we could so easily wipe them all out. But they are grouped up. They don't know what to do. They're just trying to cover different breaches in their defenses. Ugh. Look at all that blood. Just a coagulate. There it is. The mortars are just clutch right now. Let's come back over to our army. So, the white wolves are nearly out of arrows, or the orc hunters, as they should be called. Another searing doom. I know that sound. The Hawkeyes, 51 kills, 53, 62 over here. Imagine being Gelt and having all of your men just watch you fly in the air, wiping out hundreds of undead so they don't have to. That's got to be a boost for morale. If Gelt was on my side and I saw that, I would just say, you know what? I'm going to sit here, have a drink, and I'm going to cheer him on. You get him, Gelt. We've already taken out hundreds more. And we get so many mortar shells. I mean, they're just shelling them nonstop. The barrages are not going to cease. Not yet. A Searing Doom up here now. Our army, it's moving a little bit closer. Our Hawkeyes, 101 kills for the first. For the second, 96. We've got our Steingart Watchers. And finally, my infantry gets a break. They don't have to fight over here. For the mortars, we're looking at 163 kills. 214 for Gelt 223 and we're still waiting on their other units to get over here see whenever I cast a spell they like to move away so we don't always get a clean hit every time but we do hit enough 262 for kills they still have what how many units left 1135 they've got fell bats so now we're just going to bring in some golden hounds to change things up just to hit a few more of them Beautiful. I guess I don't have to really pay for my army. I shouldn't. I should have some... Oh, how cool would it be if there was like some type of campaign benefit for Gelt where he improves gold income? I would like that or something like that. Yeah, that little wall, it's no more. We're also going after the main gate too if we just need to charge in or get more of our guys to shoot inside. The Hawkeyes are moving in a little bit there. They're not really meant to be going in too close. But line of sight will do that at times. Another Searing Doom. They've got another group of Grave Guard who are now being hit by Mortars and Gel as well. We have another Breach over here. And so we're just going to bring up our units in time just to say hello if they need to. Yeah, that's where my crossbows were like, you know what? We're just going to come over here and take some damage. If we look at their army right now, they do have Black Knights. And I was really shocked that they would even attempt to come out. I'm not used to that. Usually they would just stay inside and do nothing, but they're coming out a little bit. They're at least coming over there. There we go. Skeleton Spearman just close by. Guess what? Another Searing Doom on that Grave Guard. You can see that health bar just plummet downwards. The Black Knights charged out, and so we're just having to focus fire on them a little bit. They've got a few kills. Gelt charged down. He's at 341 for kills. Captain Otto is moving in. He's at 33. And the Black Knights are going to be pushed back in. While that is going on, here comes my Steingard Watchers. A solid hit on them with my Mortars. My first Solon Hawkeyes have 121 for kills right now. The Felbats are moving in. They're all being shot by my Watchers right now. They've got 9 kills. More Searing Dooms inside just to further degrade the quality of their Grave Guard. They can't do anything. They don't have the tools for it. Now, if they had artillery or whatever else, some other tool, they could probably come over here and return fire, but I found a weak point. I can't hit multiple points when fighting the undead. We don't have the numbers for that. They are beginning to crumble now. There's my watchers who are being charged at. The Black Knights are 
trying to come out over here. But thankfully, they're all falling apart, and we have won the battle. It's over. We managed to punch through, only losing 15 men during the entire battle. Gelt alone was able to take out 371 undead. We gained 427 gold, and more importantly, 4,750 experience. Take that, Vlad. Now we have his capital and a new regiment of renown, the Reichsguard. All oh, right. Not to mention the Tatter Souls. Those are quite effective Do when fighting the undead. At rank 20, let's pick up over here something else to really help out our soldiers. We'll come on down and we'll put another point into Searing Doom. Done. After that, for Captain Otto, we'll pick up Deadly Onslaught. We want him to be able to charge in and really devastate his foes. For the castle, we've got a tier 2 gold mine. That's great. If only it was tier 3, but it's tier 2, which means we have a lot more money coming in. We are going to pick up basic walls, and that's all that we can really afford right now. We don't want to lose it. Next, we're going to have to hopefully hold on while fighting Vlad and also maintaining control of Northern Sylvania too. We've got some money to spend over here, and Gelt has heard that someone has picked up the Sword of Cain, someone who no one really knows about. Interesting. Now, let's pick up a Night Watch. We've got to get rid of enemy corruption. We could also use more money, but more importantly, for now, we need more growth in addition to replenishment. We could wait for Vlad to move from his little village over here, or we could go on the attack. That's what we're going to do. I'm not here to wait. Not today. We're here to be aggressive. We're here to hit hard, and we've done it. There's one more town for me. Let's repair it. We've got the money. Oh, look at that. They're damaged. You know what? There's more money. Or instead, let's go make some money through diplomacy. Yes. That shouldn't be too difficult. Good. A non-aggression pact, huh? Marienberg, you've got money. Make your offer. Over 2,200 gold for one non-aggression pact? We're not going to fight anytime Empire soon. Fashion. I'll take it. Yes. Now we have money. We don't have to worry about choosing either or. We just get to choose. We'll come back over here. As we want to get to tier 3 quickly, that way we could upgrade to a tier 3 gold smelter. That's a lot of money. Money that we need. What else do we have over here? An upgrade? I'll take it. Now let's end our turn and get ready to go after Waldenhof. After that, we only need to take over one more town. Dalmir von Rokhov would like to become independent. You know what? Sure. And here's why. I don't want to spend my prestige on that. I've got a lot. I could have done it. Let's come back and have a look around. What? But he likes me a lot. Let's just have a peace treaty. See? And make your He'll offer. even pay me but for it. No if you want to be free, if you want to be on your own, yes. so be it. I'll take care of that later on. I'll take your money for right now. We still have a lot of money. We could wait here for Vlad, but no, we're going to push on. Buy We've got to take over every single location in this entire province. It's over. More experience for me. We get to occupy. Now we get to go back down to hunt down Vlad. We have all of Northern Sylvania. What? Okay, we can repair that location. Let's pick up some more fields. If we do that, we're going to be able to grow quickly. We're going to be able to upgrade and move on and hopefully just keep everything safe over here. We don't need an upgraded farm. I have fields already. Instead, we'll come on down to my capital and build up a proper armory. It's a long-term investment, but it's going to be a sound one. A new commandment. Well, that's pretty easy. Let's get rid of corruption. Sigmarite dogma. Perfect. After that, we can end our turn. Okay, outside of all of the infighting, we have another vital event. The Moot Petitions. The Elder of the Moot requests audience with the Emperor. He pleads that men be sent to their eastern border to secure it against neighboring Sylvania. We're doing that now. Sure. Let's do it. <laughs> the Grand Tour. Plus one to my Imperial Authority. I've got the Prestige. I'm glad I saved it up. Now, let's rush on down. There he is. Oh no, wait, you're not Vlad. You're Jacob. And I don't care, Jacob. But I'm coming on down. 
We can't quite reach him, but we're pretty close to it. Yeah, look at how far we're able to move. That was only one turn. Oh, they want me to force march in? No, I'm not going to do that. If they want to attack, let them. Let's come over here and upgrade. We've got the money for it. We're just going to invest over here. If we do that now, we won't have to do it later. It I wonder if they're going to attack, but right now they're dealing with a bit of attrition. I wonder how they feel about that. <laughs> now they're having to deal with it. Oh, Jacob left. Okay, that's fine. It's still easy for me. Let's come over here and beat him. We fought Vlad already, and don't worry, we are going to change up and upgrade our army. We have only in small bits and pieces, but we're going to do that after our Sylvania campaign, unless we just really need to rush. Hopefully we won't have to, because we've got some good buildings back at home. Alright, so over here, we could take a bit of money, but we don't really need that money. There we are, trait gained, attack-minded. So we have a larger leadership aura size for Gelt, and more leadership when attacking. Great. Now We're going to deal with a bit of attrition, that's a shame, but we've got to do it. Instead, we'll just come over here. We shouldn't lose too many, I don't think. Level 21, we'll put a point over here into Renowned Scholar. We can't really make use of it, but I want metal to gold to magic. That's going to be nice to have as well. Our spells are already pretty darn powerful, especially for clearing out a bunch of undead. For Captain Otto, we'll put a point over here into Blade Shield. He's going to be a bit more durable. Now, Averland. Level 3 for your capital. We need that. We're going to have a very developed economy. I mean, we do, but it's going to be even better now. We could use a Force March just to lure out Vlad, but that's okay. I'm not worried about him. Not anymore. Now, that's really good news. Plus 15 to armor. Our soldiers are just going to be unstoppable when it comes to fighting in melee. Let's come over here now. Plus 10% to my income from industry. That sounds pretty good. Or we could begin to work on our clergy, on our warrior priests. We're going to pick one up. It would take me a few turns to get there, but again, that would be nice to have. Ah, it's fine. We'll do it the traditional way. It will take way too long. A scroll of leeching. That's interesting. Whistlin would like me a lot more. They want me to assassinate some enemy. Okay. I'm really far away. I wish I could help you, but I can't do that. Here we go, though. It's time to go after Vlad again. Hopefully for the last time. Sterling, they're over there in the moot. They might even help out. I could wait here for a turn to find out. No, they won't do that. We're going to have to fight them. Or I could even say, hey, I'll wait here and let you come to me. That would be nice, too. Before we go into battle, though, let's have a look around. We've got to build up. Here's Waldenhof. We'll turn it into a village. For our fort, why don't we pick up a night watch again? That corruption is actually completely gone. That's really surprising. Usually it's not, but it is. We did it. There we go. We're going to get more income. It's going to be quite stable. And Vlad is going to be gone. Oh, hold on. The dwarves took over Oakenhammer, which means after we beat him here, that should be it for him. Finally. Vlad von Karstein's lands have been reduced, but there remains one more battle to complete before he is defeated for the last time. Outnumbered by the undead, it will take faith, steel, and gunpowder combined to have any chance at victory. If Gel is able to win here, he will be able to reform and add to his growing army. The final battle against Vlad von Karstein, it's not going to be an easy one. The main tactic that we're going to utilize here is all about Gelt and Otto taking down Arrow Towers. They've got one there. We've got another one that we're using our Great Cannon to target. They've got over 4,200 units. We're just going to have to try our best. I don't know how we're going to be able to pull through here because we're going to run out of firepower and our infantry isn't fully healed up yet. The rays take more damage from magic, so they've got to go early on. And our Searing Doom only costs two magic, two winds of magic. We're back over here again, targeting that arrow tower. Thankfully, it's quite easy for these two to go after that and take it down. Another Searing Doom. The Grave Guard, they're being diminished as well, but those numbers, they're incredible. Back over here, Vlad von Karstein. Oh, 
101 leadership, 87 melee attack, 63 melee defense, and he's not even buffed up yet with all of his many abilities he has. Criticals are falling apart. They're being patched up just a bit. There we are. We took out one tower. Unfortunately, they come back so quickly and so easily. See, there's no point here where I would be able to rush when fighting the vampire counts. Where could you rush? They outnumber me so much. My units have to be used as a type of combined arms approach in battle. They can't just go in there alone. I like to build up a fairly balanced army. I could just spam great swords. I could just do that, but I know that does well. Instead, I like to build armies that feel right, that feel appropriate as well. And so I've done that, which means I got to really deal with a few more challenges and battles like the one we're in. It makes things a bit more, I suppose, suspenseful. Back over here, we've got our zombies. That's why I like anything that allows lower tier units to at least be viable, instead of just having to disregard them because you've got a straight upgrade. I want to use my state troops. We're playing the Empire. That invocation of Nahek is going to patch them up. So here's what we're going to do now. We're going to have Gelt and Otto, of course, come over here and take out another arrow tower. We're just going to be doing that the whole time while casting spells. Scroll of Leeching, huh? And over here is where we're going to have a few units moving up to just attack some skeleton warriors. My scouts, my pistoliers, they're going to go after them. We're going to have to watch out because there's going to be more arrow towers being built that will be able to hit them that I might not be able to reach quickly. The mortars are still shelling. Not everything is landing. If anything, I could have had them hold fire for a period of time. We come back over to my main formation. I'm now moving in my units. I'm trying to avoid using my melee early on because, again, once they're tired out, they're going to be less effective in melee combat. The Sons of Averheim, over 10 kills. My scouts, 7 kills, attacking some skeleton warriors who have taken a lot of damage, but it's only one group. They're not actually doing a lot for me right now because it's only one group. 3,900 undead are left. There goes another enemy tower now. Then we get a small break. They never get to rest. It would be nice if I could find a way to just delay that from being built for a little bit longer, just to have a bit of peace and quiet. We're cutting this group now. They're moving back. They can't quite make it. So we're just going after them, just shooting them. Ah, a headless one, nice. Come back over here, a perfect time for, you guessed it, a Searing Doom. Everyone gets one today. We come back over here where we're going to have, of course, our watchers moving up just a little bit, targeting some zombies. We've got our crossbows. I was hoping they would deal a lot more damage, but they did not. They did not. Back over here, we've got Gel just continuing to abuse all of them. They've got a barricade that I'm just trying to break down a little bit. I'll also use my Great Cannon where possible to hit some of their more extreme units. I mean, let's look back over here. They have thousands more all over the map, and I can't really do anything about it. I just have to fight and fight and fight. They still have, what, 3,800 units. So now we're just going to spend some time allowing these units over here to just stand and shoot. And that's all that I'm going to be able to do for that period of time as they begin to move down. And also, we're going to have to take our time slowly chipping away at Vlad until he has no more magic left to regenerate. We are finally at a point where Vlad is being committed into a melee battle. Our great swords have only just recently begun to fight. Captain Otto is taking a lot of damage. He's been charging in, attempting to take down Vlad. They've got Grave Guard over here. Felbats attacking Gelt. Gelt has 124 kills currently. Right over here is where I've moved my Gilded Guard, my hand gunners. They've got over 100 kills. Another Searing Doom to go after those Skeleton Warriors and a Transmutation of Lead to weaken Vlad. Vlad has 14 kills. That's going to go up. My Scouts have 48 kills. And we're just trying to take out a few of their infantrymen, which is what we're doing right now. That's how long the battle's been going on. And another blasted arrow tower. One hit away from falling apart. My Steingard watchers are just trying to move over here. That way we're able to flank them and avoid some friendly fire. Gil has 201 kills. Captain Otto. Oh, he's fighting. He's doing it. He's been debuffed. A master of beguilement again. 
but thankfully he's on a Pegasus, so he's able to just move up and down. Vlad at 26 kills. They've got their Wraiths now moving in. They were withdrawn for a period of time. We haven't really moved much, no. It's been all about just standing over there and fighting. It's been a battle of attrition, and that's a battle I never want to fight with the undead. Searing Doom, right on top of them. Don't take a shot every time I say Searing Doom. No one will survive, just like the targets of that spell. So over here, thankfully, our Steingart Watchers were able to flank them and get clean lines of sight. Now they're done for. But we're still fighting Vlad. Vlad has 31 kills. How many do we have left? 2,900. That's still a lot. Guess who's tired? My army. They've got gr more Graveguard, actually. Jeez. I was hoping they would be gone by now. All right, so we're over here targeting these zombies. And see, you have no choice but to hit them. These are choke points. You've got to fight them a little bit. I was hoping that my Watchers would be able to easily beat them in melee, but they're going to have to be drawn back later on, just between the shooting and the slashing. Back over here, I thought maybe I could make more use of my crossbows by targeting their infantry right over here, but that arrow tower right down the pathway is way too much to contend with. Gelt is charging in now, also going after Vlad. Vlad is fighting alone against quite a few units, but he's got more undead on the way that I'm just trying to target right now. See, that's all that I can do right now. The goal is to weaken him. It's to debuff him. It's to... He's a plague of rust. Because he's able to just regenerate and to reduce damage. Back over here, I've got my infantry now moving in. I'm finally beginning to pivot and use my infantry. I could even draw back more if I really wanted to, but I chose to stay and fight. I thought, eh, we'll do it. Got over here, my second stolen reclaimers. They're gonna hold on. My Steingart watchers were trying to draw back because of the fell bats. Look at that, a flock of doom. That's a lot of damage. That's taking out a lot of what I have over here. There's my scouts again, 82 kills. I was hoping they would be able to get some clean shots on these units because they're a little bit higher in elevation. Yeah, see that? Gelt's guard, no kills right now. They've been fighting Vlad. Vlad is at 1800 health. The Averland Runefang has debuffed him. He's using the Karstein ring to reduce his damage taken by 60%. On the left flank, we finally left all of them alone. Yeah, we took out a lot of them. We didn't need to really go back over there. And they keep on rebuilding their arrow towers. We've got the Watchers over here. 99 kills. They're going to shoot right into that underbelly. It's all exposed and decrepit and decayed. And so they continue to attack there. 73 kills for this group. The infantry, they're just trying to hold on right now. Our poor stolen Braves, they've been forced to fight in so many devastating battles. I brought in my knights over here just to help out against the fell bats and... My poor third, Solon Reclaimers, they were debuffed too. Zero melee attack. It's non-stop. I mean, his debuffs are just whew, devastating to my units whenever it happens. His Flocks of Doom are just weakening my units. There's Vlad again at 1400. Trying to reach him and damage him has been a nightmare. Another Flock of Doom. Wiping out the health bars on my poor units, but... Captain Otto and Gelder here, they're not done for yet. These poor watchers, they're just having to watch right now. Getting a good line of sight was quite difficult. They kept wanting to move into melee as I tried to angle them in a way where they could attack. So that was a very challenging affair. Thankfully, Vlad is nearly done for. Over 900 health. But Captain Otto, he's at 632. Keep in mind, he's not immortal. On the right-hand side with my knights reinforcing, we've also got my fourth... Solon Reclaimers just also helping out. They're holding. We might be able to hold on to that side. My Braves, they took more damage. They've got only 29 men left. Vlad is at 700 and what health? Oh yeah, it's going down finally. There goes Otto again, challenging the Vlad Von Karstein. Once we take him out, we should be okay. We finally got him. There goes Vlad. He has fallen. The battle is won. 
We just need to take out what's left of his army. They're all falling apart now. We've got some crypt ghouls over here. Maybe they didn't get the magical memo yet that, hey, your leader's done for. That's when I was a little bit more worried. I was like, oh my god, they're, they're still fighting. I thought after Vlad was gone, they would just fall apart right away. But no, look at how many undead are left. It's like a horror movie. Just look at that, all the heads. Oh, it's so bald. And not shiny at all. Back over here, we're just taking out Crypt Ghouls, debuffing them with the Averland Runefang, reducing base weapon damage and the melee attack. They can't land their attacks anyway. On the left-hand side, we've got my Gilded Guard at 231 kills. They were pretty effective. I like it more whenever I can use my handgunners to focus fire on our enemies, but they did just fine, despite being pelted by the arrow towers. I really wish I knew how many they took out. Like back over here, look at Captain Otto, 329 health. Gelt, 1,293, 245 for kills, 27 for Otto. And they're attacking that arrow tower again. It's just a really repetitious affair. That's why you're meant to take over points, but it wasn't easy for me to do that. I could land over here and try to cap it, but they're going to bring in their units and outnumber my poor leaders. The Gilded Guard. They're out of ammo. 251 kills. They're just running around. Back over here, despite Vlad being gone, we're fighting them. We're being debuffed by that poison from the Crypt Ghouls. My Knights charged in over here. They're at 82 kills. On the right-hand side, we're just trying to move around, just trying to reinforce where we can. And I'm just sending in all of my infantry regardless. I don't like groups being wiped out, but I didn't really have a choice here. I just had to send in everyone. Even the Orc Hunters, who have 71 kills, I like the Orc Hunters. I think they would be good at taking out like some larger creatures, but I'm going after numbers more often than not over here. The Gilded Guard, they're going to be brought back right now. We're going after the Arrow Tower that's over here with Captain Otto, who again is on the doorstep of death. And I don't think he's going to be able to broker a deal to come back. So if he dies here, that's it for him. The Watchers, they're still shooting. I mean... These guys are so pivotal to my victory today. Look at them. They're the ones taking the shots right now. And here I thought getting rid of Vlad would have been the end of it. They've got how many left? 1,400 left. I'm at under 1,000. But my infantry, they're just so done. They're like, dude, can we have a break? Can we have a nap? Nope. No nap. And no dental. Sorry, guys. I guess we could do some gold crowns, but... The Reclaimers over here are second. They've got over 100 kills. The third have 69. Hey, nice. The fourth have 95 and going up. They're just fighting this, again, battle of pure attrition, taking on the zombies. Oh, now that's a scene. Yeah, they can't just shoot them all, but it looks like they're falling apart now, and we have won the battle. It's over. We have finally won. There's peace here. We can move on. That was not an easy battle again. I'm ready to get our new tools, which again, we're going to do very soon. We gained 4,100 experience, 1,687 gold. And finally, Vlad is gone. He's all about that. He's all about coming back. We've gained a new follower, one initiate, minus three corruption. That's fine. And a bone picker. More casualties captured post-battle. That's fine. Sylvania has been destroyed. Let's have a look over here. We'll upgrade it right away. We've got the money. Do we need a training field over here? We're going to hold on to that one, I suppose. Yeah, that should work out. All right, rank 22. Put a point right over here. Done. Gel is stronger than ever before. Think about what we've done in a very short amount of time. I mean, it wasn't easy, but we were able to take out the vampire counts. They've been here for a long time, but no longer. As we wrap up this video, I would like to take a moment to thank all of you for your supporting comments. I've read through them all, and I think I'll try to figure out a type of comment council we can use in future parts or series. If you watch my CK3 content, you know how that works. I also just want to take a moment to thank the Super Chat commenters. What an awesome way to be welcomed back. We've got Alexandria, Death, Titanium Guy, Christopher, Confused Nut, Biggest Ox, Ahmad, Theo, Justin, and Mift Magi. You've been more than generous, and I really do appreciate your support. Thank you. And of course, we have our new patrons. There is Ricardo, Michael G, Walt S, Carlo, Brian K, and A Sweet Tooth. 
Oh, and as a surprise, I just checked, we've got one more person who left a super chat comment. Faust Sketcher. Your narrative campaign to top tier, the best for me. Loving the captain point of view bits really adds personality to the army. Didn't know you could do donos though through comments, but here, have my first. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. I'm going to spend more time on these comments in the future too, because one, it's a lot of fun to read. And again, you guys are incredible. We have an outstanding community and it's been a pleasure to produce content for all of you again. I've got many more ideas and you're going to see that in my videos very soon. So, thank you for watching, and as always, until then.